and welcome to my channel. My name is Sam, this is Don't Miss a Beat. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when the next video comes out. All right, so the first thing we're gonna go into are hemodynamic normals. And before we would talk about that, you really need to learn how to draw some heart of some kind. Some people use boxes. I use like this butterfly four leaf clover looking thing. It's really easy for me to redraw when I need to. I can do it on the fly and really run through all of my pressures, all of my saturations when I need to, whether it's at the table um, or right after a case. So work on whatever works for you. This works for me. Um, I'm not here to judge. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for you while we're here today. Um, so this is how I draw it. Just make sure you at least have four chambers. You have the two great vessels. Throw some valves in there so you know what you're looking at. All right, the next thing you're going to do is write your normals. Again, every book you read is gonna have different normals of some kind. And please know the numbers that I write here, your actual normals are all gonna have ranges, but who can really remember every single one of these and their ranges? It's really difficult. Um, there are certain ranges you're gonna wanna know, like wedge pressure mean, LV EDP, um, PA systolic, if you do some pulmonary hypertension studies where you work. But for right now, while we're learning the basics, let's keep it basic. So we're gonna write three numbers in each of these chambers and vessels, and that's really where you should start. I didn't really just make up these numbers. These are in texts like Derevic and Kern and some of the studies that you'll read on American Heart Association. And then I just kind of summed them together in a way that makes sense for me so that the normals each represent something and you'll see how they tie into each other when we start breaking this down. If you aren't an artist, that's okay. You can do these in the list instead of the heart. The heart is just a good place for people who also are also still learning blood flow. So you can kind of draw it out and we'll do that in some examples. So let's start with RA, RV, PA, LA, which would be pulmonary wedge pressure. If you're getting these pressures from right heart cath, you're not going transeptal. LV and AO. And each of these are gonna have three numbers that go next to it. And it's important that you understand what those three numbers represent. So 653, and again, all of these are in millimeters of mercury, 2504 for RV, 25915 for PA, 10138 for pulmonary wedge pressure, 120, there we go, 0, 09 for LV, and 120, 80, 93 for AO. All right, so each of these numbers, remember, represent something. The good news is some of them match. So RA is A, V, and mean. So both of your atriums are going to be different pressures, but represent the same thing. So 10 would be A, 13 would be V, and eight would be mean. Your ventricles are also gonna be the same. So the first number is going to be systolic. That's your systolic pressure in that chamber. The second number is beginning diastolic pressure. And the last one is end diastolic pressure. Now, if you notice, that's a lot to write and we're all about simple here. So instead of that, you're going to see abbreviations and we're com commonly going to verbalize them as abbreviations. So the second one is BDP for beginning diastolic pressure. The last one is EDP for end diastolic pressure. And then you're gonna write the same thing for your left ventricle. And you're going to write the same labels for the left ventricle. Because remember, although there are different pressures because LV is a higher pressure system, the labels are the same. Systolic, beginning diastolic, and end diastolic pressure. The next one we're gonna go on to are the great vessels. So the PA and the AO. These are gonna look a little similar to your blood pressure numbers that you document but I'm gonna make a really important point about the mean. So you see it says systolic, diastolic, and mean. This is not the same mean that we wrote for the two atrium, remember AV mean. This is a different kind of mean and they're different formulas. So I don't just write it as mean or write it as M, I write it as something specific so that you can differentiate that. So for the PA, that last number is gonna be MPAP, M-P-A-P, mean pulmonary artery, pressure. You can just write it as MPAP or MPAP if you want. You don't have to write out the whole thing because again, we're here for simple, but that way you're not just writing an M and you know that they're different. Then for AO, we're going to do the same thing, right? Systolic, diastolic. So this is like your systolic diastolic for your blood pressure. And then the last one is also mean, but it's the mean arterial pressure, not mean pulmonary artery pressure because it's in the AO. 
not the PA. So you're going to write it as map. All right, let's go back to the person who draws the heart. Make sure you go in and label what each of those numbers mean in their respective chambers. All right, so now I'm going to tell you why these numbers are even important. I told you I write them a certain way for a reason. So you're going to see I highlight PA systolic, RV systolic, LV systolic, and AO systolic, the first numbers of all of those. Now, can you see what is similar between two of them? Okay, so PA systolic and RV systolic are the same, right? 25 and 25. Then you'll notice AO systolic and LV systolic are also the same, 120, 120. What if they didn't equal each other? Well, if they didn't equal each other, that would be called a gradient, a difference of pressures where there shouldn't be a difference in pressures. Now let's do something to these pressures. So the first thing I'm going to do is change my LV systolic pressure, and I'm going to change it to 220. Yes, that's a dramatic increase, but we're dramatic here so we can make a point. So you see there's a big difference between LV systolic and AO systolic. LV is 220, AO remains 120. But now you have a gradient. So the difference between the 220 and the 120 is a 100 millimeter of mercury gradient. And remember, pressures in the heart are measured in millimeters of mercury. That's MMHG, which you've seen I've written here. What else did you see that was similar? So look at the RA mean and the RV EDP. So you see they're about one millimeter of mercury off from each other. Same with the left atrial mean or pulmonary wedge pressure mean of eight and the LV EDP of nine. And that's a little more advanced of how and why and when those would change, but it is something to note of those are written in a specific way so that they're pretty similar to each other. And when we talk about preload, then we'll talk about those numbers again. Last but not least are the V waves. So the V waves were in the atrium, remember? So it's the second number. LA V wave is 13 and RA V wave is five. No, they're not near each other in value, but they are important to go ahead and highlight on your little heart diagram or the list of pressures because they're going to be hallmark signs for something in the future that are very important. That concludes part one of normals. Thank you for watching and look forward to more videos. Thank you.